Ladies and gentlemen, Critic is Center! Yeah, hell yeah! Ooh. And I'll, I'll kill my... my, uh... webcam on this side. This is tricky. I never do this, so... We're going backups. Dude, how are you today? I appreciate you joining. Sorry for the technical you know, difficulties. Made it somehow, alright? <laughs> you did. Uh, for those First that... hurricane to hit this coast since, I don't know, like 93 or something, and we're here. So, <laughs> happy to be here. What do you mean? There was a hurricane like two weeks ago. Oh, well, that see, that hit the West Coast and then just came across. This one hit direct East Coast. Oh, bummer, bummer. Dude, for, for oh. those that uh, may not know you, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world uh, you are at the moment and plug or yeah. promote anything you'd like. So my name is Derek Gregoire. I'm the front man of Creating a Center here, who is from Buffalo, New York. However, I currently am in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, moved down here because, you know, life likes to take its twists and turns. And we're just kind of, kind of running with it. Um, I run my own side business called Cadessa Woodwork, which I believe BG's got some work over there from me. Um, Besides that, just single dad working hard, trying to uh, do the music thing and get life going. I do have these goodies that you sent me. I really appreciate it. He <laughs> sent me a, a a phone holder with a little weed leaf back behind it. Looks like that right there. As well as something I will definitely use uh, when my son's not around. A little uh, weed leaf tray right here. My favorite part of it, though, is it has the, the cutout in the corner so when you have all your, your goodies right here, you can just tip it that way and it'll just roll right into it instead of having to scoop it all like that. 10 little joint holder slots. That was cool of you to send, man. I appreciate it. Heck yeah. I got, I like went crazy and kind of made a whole bunch of them uh, a few months ago and just kind of never did anything with them. They've been sitting around the house and I'm, you posted that you needed some sort of business stuff. I was like, you know what? I got these laying around wouldn't hurt to make one up for him and get it sent out so that was nice of you do we constantly yeah. talk about how at least i do how your album cover is so well thought out who what was the concept behind it and and that meaning of the apples all right so the band actually started off it was named compare a sin uh and then me and an old a friend from high school got in an argument about who made that name. So I just said whatever and created a new name, uh, creating a center, which still went with, which it's kind of like a Venn diagram, but in the shape of an apple and, you know, the first sin, whatever. I'm not very, I'm personally not religious at all, which is going into the whole band name. But the name of the album is Regarding Cycles, or as you can see, Recycles. So I mm -hmm. figured going back into that apple tree with our apple being our logo, it would make sense to have like the recycle logo or like the life of the tree where you have, you know, the tree and then it drops the apple, the apple then gets eaten or whatever leaves behind seeds. And then you have another tree again. It's clever. Um, and I sent that to a friend named Brian Neves and I had it super poorly drawn on a crappy piece of paper about this big. And I'm like, yo, this is what I'm looking for, dude. And he just absolutely killed it. I couldn't have asked for anything better. That is awesome. Um, I wish I would have thought about it. I have a, a, our second album cover too, which I think you're going to love as well, um, which just turned out to be a pre-made from an artist and works perfectly for our second album, which is going to be called... Uh, symptoms uh because we like to go with themed albums here and then i know you sent me something that we we may tease play a little bit later but just when is the rough timetable for when that that second album might come out or a single or music video before it comes out so uh the fun part about creating a center is who knows uh <laughs> So we started in 2017 and we've been trying to get this first album out pretty much since then and get the right members in on the album and getting everything recorded the way we wanted it to. Uh, so you know, 
what five years or so for this first one you know give or take we're gonna pretend we're rock stars so like 10 for the next one i don't know uh, yeah. no so hope hopefully i'll have uh at least this song that i'm sending to you is going to be the single off of it would be out hopefully late summer of next year um probably towards the end of summer i think it's more of the feel for this next album let's jam a song so people know uh, what we're talking about here I think we said it's fitting yeah. if we go with Stoked and Stone to start us off. Oh, everybody else in the band is kind of located in different places. Is that kind of what you were alluding to? Uh, so, no, actually, we, we were all from Buffalo. Uh, and, and then I was like, hey, I'm going to leave. And they're like, hey, yeah, we could do this. Because they all, you know, most of our bands that we all like, none of them live in the same spot. So we figured it made sense. We could still absolutely do it from a distance. Um. So, you know, we didn't decide to, like, break up as a band. We're still trying to do shows here and there where we can. Um, however, Daytona Beach here is mostly cover bands, and we just we just don't have any covers. We haven't really practiced any. If we were going to, it would be, like, Backstreet Boys or something ridiculous. Excellent. Uh, but as for now, like, it's just not the scene for us down here. So I'm trying to push out around the area and see what I can do uh, for Florida-based. So if anybody knows anybody, DM Creating a Center on any of the social medias, uh, there's probably like a porn hub up there too. For getting for getting gigs like it within somewhere in Florida. Yeah, anywhere in Florida. Oh yeah, I'll message you. I know a bunch of people in Florida. Oh, actually, I'll actually be in Florida oh, yeah. uh, in like ten ten days. We just I always have a hard time like placing us with other bands. We sit in a weird spot. It's like an alternative rock, but it's like a neurodivergent rock where it just kind of sits in between genres of you know most bands that we come across um now like hey we're the most unique band out there kind of idea just it's hard to find it like bands that we fit in the most with in local areas by just hey word of mouth because it's just such a kind of niche genre nowadays jb uh do you have any questions for uh our guest Derek? yeah and it's not music related whatsoever um quite do you have tattoo work so i i personally have two well technically three um but one's like covering up the other one it's just both of the artists were terrible and you can just see the first one still um <laughs> which were those were my first two tattoos uh both friends that are like yeah bro i'm learning how to tattoo you I got don't you. have any tattoos i need you know can i use some space i'm like yeah bro you can practice on me why not so like i had him do a one-up mushroom and then he like tried to shade the face and it just it didn't it didn't look like shading it looks bad so i had to we then put uh bomb bomb over top of like all big black and then they like nared my leg and then tattooed it so you know i had a really bad chemical burn and it was awful and I, they might have been mad at me i don't know but so what's the third one how did and the, <laughs> surely you went to one. a professional for the third one the, the third one was professional absolutely <laughs> i learned my Woo! lesson you know after the second uh, the third one, I was just, I went to New York City to play a show in Amityville. Uh, we went, we visited the house, which actually turns out to be one of my best friends from high school's uncle was the guy that did all the murders. Hmm. Small world. Uh, but we went, we visited the house and we went to the ocean where I saw some horseshoe crabs that were, you know, like washed up on the beach. Uh, found out they were alive when I, you know, tried to pet one. And... So we like released it back in the ocean. We just happened across a tattoo shop and I was like, Hey, I'm getting a tattoo. Like, what do you want? I, was like, well, I didn't get that far. I, a horseshoe crab. And so they drew that up. So that's on my other calf. So both my calves are covered and that's well, been about it. A horseshoe Great. crab. <laughs> At least you always remember that, that, that day and that moment for sure. Oh yeah. No, it, it was a fun time. And on the way home, we got a car accident with a deer. Oh, jeez. And, uh, yeah. I, so, I tried to sleep for 10 minutes. I was like, here, take the wheel. You got this. I fell asleep for 10 minutes. And in those 10 minutes, boom, hit a deer. Hey, you got to drive home the rest of the way. Dang, <laughs> it's that's good time. crazy. It was, it was. How, how much of, of attrition am I allowed to play before we play it? All right. So, like, 
probably the first like minute and a half max. It's only like three minutes long, but like, yeah, first minute and a half max. Okay, I'll go. I'll go uh, about that much, and then I, I will not play any more than that. So we'll save it for the proper release. But do you want to cue this song up, as far as what it's about and everything? So I mean, this song is actually pretty straightforward. Of what it's about, um, it, it's about depression. Um, most musicians I know struggle with depression or some sort of mental illness, which is, mm-hmm. you know, why we hop on stage and scream about it into the void. Um, but this one specifically, the band was like, hey, bro, we want this song written about, dep- or, uh, about depression. They came up with the guitar, the instruments for it, and threw it at me. And the drummer was like, yo, bro, I, ha- I, just, I have this fucking idea for the lyrics. And we just kind of kicked it together and pieced this out. And honestly, I think this is kind of my favorite song we've ever written. And it really shows the direction that the band's headed towards the next album here. And then we actually have been writing like crazy. I think we're on like eight songs for this one already. Um, Now, mind you, that means we have about 30 songs we've written and then just dropped it down and narrowed it to these uh, ones that seem to do well in front of crowds, at least. But this one's attrition hands down my favorite one to over in oh yeah now i see what you're talking about now i see what you're talking about like the emotion and the yeah. the belting and the aggression all comes out right there oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it hits and then the whole second half of the song is completely different completely different none of the same guitar parts none of nothing whole fl- different flow so the Very drummer cool. was actually really psyched right in that one i think i i don't know i fucking love it <laughs> <laughs> What's what's your uh, what's your preference, sativa, indica, or hybrid? So I, I'm weird with it. Indica is actually one that gives me the energy, so that's the one that I go with. Same. Uh, personally, sativa just kind of put me to sleep, man. I can't do it. It's a flip floppity. It's interesting. Oh yeah, I, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, JB, what other questions I'm do you have? Weird one. Um, <clears throat> the question is. I'm going to do it for Lizzie. How is it balancing music, work, and being a single parent? Yeah. We're doing it. <laughs> You're it's, doing it? <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's a balance. It's absolutely nuts. It's, it's, it's a balance and a half. It's constantly trying to get to something just a little bit late so that they're not upset. But like late enough that you still got to do the thing you were supposed to do before you left uh it's constantly running around it's one of the all right so as we you know discussed uh i have depression uh but i also have anxiety uh and the fun part is when you have anxiety you're just constantly worrying about other shit besides depression so it's like constantly running around with anxiety and not ever having to deal with the depression portion. You just kind of stay busy enough to function, I mm. guess is the best word for it. You know, you, you get by, you know, um, it's, it's rough at times, but it's amazing at times. I mean, I want to trade it for the world uh, by any means. Uh, music is the release, you know, Raising a kid is absolutely challenging in a lot of different ways that I never would have expected. Uh, definitely wasn't prepared for by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, you know, every day I'm learning just as he is. Um, frustrating at times, but again, you know, rewarding. Um, and then the work life, it just, you know, you do what you got to do to get by. It is what it is. And then nobody's keep pushing super and keep fighting. happy with it, but you push through for what you got to do. You know, right now I'm 100%. still working a day job on top of my woodworking. So uh, I picked something that I enjoy doing. You know, I, I'm a maintenance technician by day, uh, then woodworker, dad, musician by night. Um, <laughs> I like it, man. Of many crafts. And we're getting there, you know. Try and stay busy and stay focused on, you know, upward and onward. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Derek, where you can where it. is your your ultimate, I want to play a show here in front of 20,000 people. Where where in the world is like your one, I must play here someday? 
you know, honestly, like I haven't really thought about it, but because I've had the opportunity at one point and like, it was just a weird stage in my life. So I missed it. Uh, I would love to play, you know, for Mike Zimer and South by so what, um, just because he's such a great dude and that festival is fantastic. And every year it's awesome and getting bigger and better. And I just, I'd absolutely love to play that personally. He uh, has agreed to be on the show, and I have his email, but he is that. so hard to get a hold of. I love that. He is oh, so no, hard absolutely. to get a hold of. Oh, he, and he's a busy man as well. I mean, he's got like three, four, five different companies underneath him that he's trying to manage, and I, I don't know how he does it. Like, I think I stay busy with the four or five things I'm doing. He's on top of a lot more than I'm on yeah, top that. Yeah, that man, that so, man's working. He, yeah, he's absolutely working. Derek, we have time for a couple more. Before we ask our final questions, what is one song off of uh, this EP that we have not played that you prefer we do? I have not played prefer we do. I don't think we've really gone through emulsification or intro as much. Um, intro is a lot more instrumental, so probably emulsification would be the way to go. It's, it's fascinating that intro is track five also. Oh, uh, intro is one. I don't know how that got put out there. But I, I mean, oh, I, yeah, I yeah, because this is this is just the five. algorithm. This is okay. Uh, oh, okay, I was like, I don't hate that it's five, but so I was like, yeah, dang, so, that, okay. that kind of makes me think it's track five, but it's called mm -hmm. intro. Oh. Hell yeah! Well, good sir, I have a final question for you. I just want to know, what is the worst show you ever played, and what went wrong? Everybody plays a terrible show, but this was the absolute worst one. Everything went wrong. Can you, can you tell us that quick story? So there's two. One's just quick. There was absolute insane technical malfunctions the whole time. And I, my guitarist gave up uh, and just said, no, we're done. But the absolute worst one is there's this place up Buffalo called Broadway Joe's. And anybody from Buffalo knows Broadway Joe's. Michaela absolutely knows Broadway Joe's. <laughs> and they, they had... A front stage and a backstage and we play this festival where like a band would play in the front and then a band would play in the back and I, I guess the idea was that people from the inside would then walk to the outside and watch the outside bands but they just didn't uh, so I was like one of the last bands that was or I was the last like solo act at the time that was supposed to play out back and it got to a point where like couple of the touring managers got together and came out back and they're like hey do you guys like want to get together and pick like a cover song and go play out front in front of everybody since literally nobody's came back here the whole day so there was like five of us back there that like scrambled together to make a cover song to play in front of like the actual crowd of people and it just went as awful as you can imagine 10 minutes worth of trying to figure out a cover between five different musicians would go uh i could see how that and, could be a little a little odd if you guys don't really know each other that well yeah, no, i mean just nobody was from the same area it was a bunch of like regional and then a couple touring acts that all came in and were playing together and i mean not, yeah none of us knew each other knew each other's styles anything like that at one point it was just like three or four of the acoustic acts just sitting around in a circle playing songs with each other or like for each other kind of thing like at least in the back world the inside was absolutely packed don't i mean it was there was a lot of fucking people inside they just they weren't coming out back you know that's weird uh but yeah it was i have to say that was definitely one of the worst shows i played and that was right at the beginning and actually that was I, that was the show that i got the best advice i had ever gotten which was i should give up uh, because I guess that really could have went one of two ways. I was either going to give up or I was going to try a lot harder to be better, or get to the, you know, where I am now and practice harder every single day. Right. I think realistically more people should be told that. Cause then, like I say, you know, it's only going to go one or two ways. You're either going to actually give up, which, you know, you didn't want it that bad in the first case, you know, you could focus your life on something else or, you're gonna say no i'm not giving up to watch this and you're gonna show me wrong and i mean if you gotta be that guy you know be that guy you know creating a center that's what it's all about you know 
I dig it. You're kind of the bad guy in everybody's story. I dig it. And I, I appreciate you taking some time out of your day. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. I have to oh, actually no, I mean, somehow con <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta convert back to teams now all while live and like read switch everything back. But uh we were able to pull this off and that's the important thing. So uh, we got it. That's dude, probably on me. <laughs> uh no, no worries. Uh stay safe. I know those hurricanes get rough over there in Florida. Uh we look forward to the release hey. next summer and uh the, the rest oh, of the album coming out with it but uh ladies and gentlemen if you enjoyed the music please hit the follow button support derek support creating a center and uh have yourself a blessed day man we really appreciate it hey appreciate you for having me man have a good day thank you jb let's jump back over to teams creating Here a go. center Give me a hell yeah hell yeah brother